Hello, and welcome to the second edition of Hero of Legends Musings. This time, I will be talking about uh, a pretty interesting uh, and a bit unusual topic regarding how, well, it's basically about, it all starts with two games. Minecraft on Wii U and Popolo Croes, or the full name being Return to Popolo Croes, A Story of Seasons Fairy Tale on 3DS. Why am I talking about these two games to be specific? Well, it's because it's a very strange situation. Well, let's start with Minecraft. Uh, to put it short, uh, a little history first for those who don't know. I'm sure most know by now, but maybe not the finer details of like why this relates to this topic. Minecraft is, you know, the the old block, uh, the block building simulation game, adventure game, whatever, by Mojang. And basically, it started on PC. It grew over time, and then eventually came out on Xbox 360 and then expanded to more consoles afterward. In around September 2014, Microsoft purchased Mojang along with Minecraft, and essentially Mojang became a first party uh, company of Microsoft, like Rare was uh, back in 2002 when Microsoft bought them. And, and Minecraft is it's weird. It's technically a Microsoft franchise, but Everything I've seen so far, the copyright and trademark is still under Mojang. So I, I guess for all it's for all intents and purposes still a Microsoft franchise, but whatever. So by around that point, the game had already come out or were scheduled to come out on Xbox One, PS3, Vita, and PlayStation 4. The system noticeably absent in this list is the Wii U version. Now, the Wii U version wasn't even announced until all the way back around, what was it, October or November 2015, and eventually released on December 17th, 2015 on the eShop worldwide, I believe. And this is interesting because, one, uh, it was already established when Microsoft bought Mojang that the franchise would stay multi-platform. It wouldn't all of a sudden become exclusive to Microsoft systems. And thing is, um, for one thing, Mojang publishes the game every like on all systems, I believe, uh, in North America and Europe. In Japan, it's sort of split between, like, I believe Microsoft handles all the uh, Xbox versions of the game and maybe the PC version. And Sony themselves handle the Sony versions of the games on PS3, PS4, and Vita. Here's where it gets interesting. The Wii U version was actually published by Microsoft Japan. This is unprecedented because Microsoft, obviously being a first party manufacturer, like a, a, one of the big three console makers, would only naturally publish games on their systems, just like Sony would on their systems and Nintendo would on, would on their systems, etc., etc. This is a poss quite possibly the very first time I think any company still in the hardware business would publish a game on a competitor's platform. If I am wrong, please correct me, but this could be the very first time, and it, it most certainly is the first time I believe that Microsoft have ever published a game not on PC, Xbox, or whatever, which is basically the first point, but you get what I mean. And it is true. It, it says so on the eShop page listing, I believe, in Japan. Um, but also, the retail version was announced for worldwide, and actually just yesterday for Europe, I believe. And the retail version in Japan is actually, again, being published by Microsoft. Um, if you look at the box art, it will actually show the Mojang logo. However, in a little line right below it, it will say, Published by Microsoft Japan. Uh, Microsoft Japan is uh, written in Japanese text. But um, but yeah, it's basically still, it's written right there, that uh, My Microsoft is publishing the game at retail in Japan. That's just basically using Mojang's logo, either for branding purposes or just a way to not put their logo on the box, I don't know. I've looked around on, um, I've, I've looked at Microsoft's other 
Xbox uh, games in Japan around this time, and I don't believe they even put their logo on the boxes anymore. Maybe in the back, but uh, but uh, maybe on the back of the boxes, but not on the front anymore. So whether uh, they would put their name on it or not, it, they just uh, well, I don't know. But uh, it's their name's not on the, not on the front, but it is mentioned. This opens a whole can of possibilities, in my opinion. For one thing, um, for what we've seen, although we we honestly have very little data on this, because but basically. The Wii U version on the eShop in Japan has done really well. It's the only true, or at least approximate numbers we've seen so far. And from what I remember, the December total in Japan reached 77,000 copies according to Famitsu. The following month was a little lower, like 71,000 or something. So totaling, uh, totaling around uh, 150 or so, a, a bit lower than that. Like. Uh, if my if that total is correct, if I add those two up, it would be like uh, one forty eight thousand. Yeah. Anyways, um, if I believe correctly, that is actually outpacing all the other versions of the game, even the Vita, even the Vita version, which is uh, uh, doing pretty impressively in Japan. And unfortunately, for whatever reason, Famitsu stopped providing numbers on the game. Even though it's been a constant number one seller on the Wii U eShop in Japan uh, ever since it launched. So it's really weird that uh, we got numbers for like Splatoon digitally, which would be like around a, couple, a few thousand copies each, each of the months that followed, and yet no sign of Minecraft on Wii U. So the number, uh, like that 148,000 number is technically outdated by pff, quite a few months, uh, since January was the last one we got. Uh, the numbers on. Anyways, this to me is very interesting because it shows the buying power of the family audience on Nintendo hardware. No one is going to deny the uh, the buying power of the family audience on Nintendo hardware. I mean, it's basically where cartoony games are born and bred, like Mario, Donkey Kong, Zelda, etc., etc. So. And I basically address this point in my in my first musings video about Sonic, and how he's uh, clearly a, the, a perfect match on Nintendo hardware. So that sort of brings that back. And it's it, it's funny because Microsoft obviously have quite a few family friendly franchises under their belt, including but not limited to those by Rare, including Viva Pinata, Banjo Kazooie, as we all know from the N64. Um, others like, well, technically Conker's not family-friendly, but it's, it's still got the art style, obviously. I mean, he deb Conker debuted in Diddy Kong Racing, so there's automatically that familiarity with uh, the Nintendo uh, fan base. Um, but basically, oh, and also other examples include Blinks, the Time Sweeper. No one remembers that guy, but uh, yeah, he was actually created by uh, Artoon, who I addressed in the uh, last video. Uh, so... They could technically technically get Arzest, uh, the, the successor to Artoon, to make a new Blinks game, should they ever want to. Um, it's funny, actually, because Microsoft dropped the Blinks trademark, uh, I think last year, uh, I believe. Whether or not that means they just are basically forfeiting the rights, I have no idea. It just basically shows they don't have a whole lot of interest in it. But besides that, um, aside from Minecraft... Which is obviously obviously doing well on every system out there. Microsoft doesn't really have a family audience, at least now on Xbox One and PC. I mean, or at least one they can directly sell to. I don't know. Like, let's take Xbox One for example. How many family-based games are performing well on it? I mean, maybe Skylanders. I don't. Think so. I think um, the, I think it's usually the pre-gen versions like 360, PS3, and on Wii with all the previous uh, entries prior to the new Imaginators, and Wii U compared to the other current-gen versions, despite the user base differences, obviously. Um, but yeah, Microsoft could see Minecraft's success on Wii U and maybe consider bringing some of their um, older family-friendly and 
mostly unused IPs over there to Nintendo hardware. And this is funny because Phil Spencer, the big the head honcho of the Xbox division, has admitted on Twitter that they've worked with Nintendo on rare IPs before, specifically like uh, Viva Pinata Pocket Paradise on DS, which is the uh, up to uh, to this date the very last rare game on a Nintendo system. Came out way back in 2008, and and of course we've had a couple Banjo Kazooie games on the GBA with Grunty's Revenge and Banjo Pilot, a revived uh, version of Diddy Kong Pilot, and yeah, Phil Spencer knows almost as, like ba almost better than anyone how, uh, or at least at Microsoft how important Rare's legacy is on Nintendo hardware, and also some of their uh, j like Japanese IPs like. Uh, the, the aforementioned Blinks the Time Sweeper. No, I don't think uh, Microsoft is ever going to touch that IP again. I mean, they have no presence in Japan whatsoever. I mean, uh, I remember doing a calculation, and I think others have as well on GAF. The Wii U version of Minecraft could actually end up being, or I even say unquestionably, Microsoft's highest performing game ever in Japan. Let that sink in. Their highest performing game, from what I remembered, is Blue Dragon on the Xbox 360, selling just north of 200,000 copies. If the eShop version of, of Minecraft uh, Wii U over already sold 148,000 copies in just two months, it, I, I guarantee it's basically past 200,000 by now. I mean, in, in the following months since, in, like uh, si about six months later, Oh yeah, it's got to pass. It, it had to have passed two hundred thousand by now, which is just mind blowing. That Microsoft could actually have their highest performing game in Japan on a Nintendo system. I don't think anyone would have imagined that happening ten years ago. So yeah, hopefully, maybe Microsoft will dip their toes into the idea of bringing Rare's IPs to not only Nintendo handhelds again, but maybe on the console side as well. I mean, yeah, they just put out Rare Replay and are making Sea of Thieves on Xbox One. Um, for one thing, to me, Sea of Thieves doesn't exactly look like uh, something Rare of 10-odd years ago would have made. It just doesn't look very Rare-ish to me, despite it being Greg Mayo's baby, as it were. Like, he really wanted to make that game, as far as I remember, and the pirate theme is definitely not unfamiliar to Rare. I mean, Donkey Kong Country 2 uh, was pirate-themed. Uh, what else? What else? Project Dream, which uh, I believe uh, that Captain Black Eye, or whatever his name is, is actually in Sea of Thieves. I could be wrong, but I remember seeing something like that. That was pirate-themed. Banjo has pirate elements like, uh, oh, what was that level called in the first game that had the pirate ship with the burping hippo? <laughs> Anyways, I don't remember offhand if there were any other games with pirate elements, but Anyways, I just don't uh, see Rare and Microsoft making any more family-friendly games like the classics on Xbox One and such. Aside from Rare Replay, but that was just more of a, a compilation of their earlier games. And um, do we know how well that has done? Like, I don't know if we have any concrete numbers on that. Maybe it did well. I'm not sure. It's a definitely it's an outstanding value. I mean, it's only thirty dollars, but you get, you get you literally get thirty games, and a big chunk of those are uh, from their N N64 and uh, 360 era. So that's an amazing value. Um. Anyways, uh, hopefully, maybe Microsoft will consider it. I don't know, bringing their uh or like rare games again to Nintendo hardware. Interesting fact is that Donkey Kong 64 which finally came out on the Wii U Virtual Console uh, in January last year, actually retained Jetpack, which is uh, definitely Microsoft-owned now. Instead of just uh, removing it, they actually allowed Nintendo to keep it in. So it's interesting that you can, uh, there is actually one game playable both in uh, Rare Replay and on Wii U, which is, uh, as mentioned, Jetpack. Uh, that's pretty interesting. Let's first then just consider swapping it with uh, another uh, DK game, maybe Donkey Kong Jr. or something. Well, I'm glad they kept it in. We'll see what the future holds. Maybe, well, who knows. 
Uh, what other family-friendly franchises do Microsoft have? I know I mentioned Rare, I mentioned Blinks. They did re uh, reboot Zoo Tycoon um, a year or so ago by Frontier, the folks behind Lost Winds on WiiWare and the recent Connectables, uh, Connectables on Connect, obviously. And it looked okay. The originals were actually by Blue Fang Games, who unfortunately are no longer around. Back around 2009, they actually made a Wii game uh, called World of Zoo with THQ, who, funny enough, were the main publishers of Microsoft's offerings on the GBA and DS, sans any Japanese-related stuff. So, yeah, it's pretty interesting. Um, I remember that being okay. But yeah, Blue Fane eventually just uh, sort of shrunk down to be mostly a Facebook game, uh, browser game developer, and eventually closed down. It's a real shame. But it, uh, that's what happened. Um, yeah, other family IPs. Um, well, I know there was like Voodoo Vince, I think, uh, was another trademark that was uh, dropped uh, around the same time as Blinks last year. The developer, I, f I don't remember the name of, but I, I remember reading they're still around, um, doing other, th other, other small things. That's another IP maybe they could attempt to uh, make happen. Actually, um, as, if Microsoft actually would uh, consider the idea, they could just allow Mojang to sort of branch out and sort of become their third-party label. And, uh, you know, bring those IPs to Nintendo hardware and see how they do. Since, like, you know, with Minecraft Wii U and they, like, specifically the Japanese release and ha them putting Moyang's logo on the front of the box sort of gave me the idea that they could be their thir third party label rather than just them just putting their logo front and center on a Wii U game or eventually NX. But that's just wishful thinking. It, it, this. The whole point of this video is just more of a wishful thinking. Will it happen? Probably not, but it's just a, it, that's the whole point of videos like this. It's my opinion pieces. You know, you can, you're welcome to agree or disagree, but, you know, it's, it's just uh, wanted to give you my perspective on things. And, you know, uh, I would adore the idea. Um, anyways, I think I'll um, and the Microsoft portion of this video, and then move to the second game uh, this video is about, Return to Publicorus, A Story of Seasons Fairy Tale for 3DS. As you might have predicted by now, or maybe, in, or, no, just in case you didn't, um, the reason why I put Publicorus on this list, or oh, well, in this video, is, for those who don't know, the series uh, actually started out as a manga series of sorts. It's, it, it's like a very small manga, but it was eventually adapted into an anime and a video game franchise. Sony would uh, publish the games on the PS1 and PS2 and uh, the one lone entry on PSP in Japan. The series didn't ever reach North America until the one on PSP by HTEC. You know, most notable uh, during the PS2 era for being sort of From Software's North American release uh, publisher. You know, like the Armored Core franchise and whatnot. Um, and yeah, the series sort of went on a decade-long hiatus, and eventually, uh, late 2014, the uh, the game, uh, the new game, was announced for 3DS uh, Nowhere in Famitsu. And not only were the same people who worked on the all the original entries, uh, now named Epics, who were originally called G artists, um, but the funny thing is, the trademark for Pubble Lacrosse is not owned by the original Arthur, though his name does appear in the copyright. Uh, forgive me, I don't remember his name. But Sony Computer Entertainment Incorporated do have their name in the copyright. This includes the 3DS game. I am not kidding. If you look on the very back of the box, it will say, um, and I believe I quote, I don't have it on me, uh, 
Pablo Cross is a trademark or registered trademark of Sony Computer Entertainment Incorporated. <clears throat> it literally says that on the back of the 3DS uh, retail box. It also says so on the game's website uh, by Xseed. And actually in uh, Japan as well, but it's all in Japanese text. This also is a very intriguing topic because this is um, in an interesting situation because with Microsoft and, and Minecraft, for one thing, Minecraft is technically not in Microsoft's name. Uh, only Moyen's logo, oh, only Moyen's name appears in the copyright of the Minecraft franchise. Public Cross does for Sony. Even though it's not really a, they didn't create and you know the franchise and actually, it, it's not like Ratchet and Clank or you know those sort of uh, series which were born and bred on Sony hardware. But their name, but Sony put their name on the trademark for reasons unknown, and they allowed this to happen for the game to be on a, a Nintendo handheld. And. This is with them having the Vita out and about. They have their own handheld, and it's not like Marvelous, the uh, publisher of the uh, Japanese and, te and technically the North American release, uh, and Europe, yeah, it came out in Europe. Uh, North American was published, it was published in North America by Xseed, and Europe by Marvelous uh, Europe, I believe. And, uh, what was I gonna say? Uh, yeah, the Vita, uh, Marvelous was uh, a pretty big uh, supporter of the Vita, I mean, with the Senran Kagura games and uh, Muramasa Rebirth and other such games. So it's not like they have abandoned the Vita. Actually, they're uh, currently making that Uppers uh, game on Vita. So they're still making Vita games. So I understand it's a cr technically a crossover with Story of Seasons, formerly known as uh, formerly known as Harvest Moon, uh, before they split with Natsume, who still own the Na the Harvest Moon name and are making their own games with the, with the newly announced Harvest Moon uh, Sky Tree Village for 3DS. That's another topic. Um, there's no reason why Sony couldn't have just knocked on Marvelous's door and said. Yeah, um, we're letting you use our IP, you know, and, you know, publish a game based on trademark we we own. We want you to make it on Vita. And it's weird because for, if you would think Sony would be like, no, you're making this only on Vita. If 3S is not, if 3S isn't even in the equation, it's like, there's no, uh, no two words about it, no two ways about it. It's it's a Vita exclusive. It'd be like making Mario on PS4, or Xbox One. No. It, it's it, we own the trademark. It's going to be on the Vita. Nope, no Vita version at all. It was a 3DS exclusive. I don't know how this happened, but it happened. Uh, it, it's real. It 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 happened. I mean, even Minecraft is all over the place. It's not a Nintendo exclusive. It was a Microsoft. It was on Microsoft systems first. If you if you include PC, which. Eh, I guess micro. It, it, I consider it to be more a Microsoft first thing, but that's just me. And yeah, this this happened. And what possibilities does this open up? I mean, Sony haven't yet said whether there will be a Vita successor or not. In fact, uh, Shu Yoshida, the head of Sony Worldwide Studios, has basically hinted or at least said, you know, because the mobile market is too dominating and it, the market, the portable market is not healthy for a Vita successor, I remember, I remember reading that, but they haven't officially bowed out yet. So, in terms of their status as a, at least a handheld third party, I don't know. But public cross happened. So, does this mean Sony might have the idea of bringing their other J uh, Japanese IPs to the system? Maybe even more than that. Maybe their Western-based IPs like Ratchet and Clank and Jack and Daxter. Who the hell? Who the hell knows? I thought that maybe they could tempt, attempt to make, to make uh, maybe or at least allow Wild Arms or uh, Dark Cloud or oh, what was the the one called um, Ark the Lad on on uh, 3ds or eventually the NX handheld or whatever it ends, ends up being called because for one thing we don't know yet if those IPs are ever going to show up again on Sony on home consoles like the PS4. 
Sony seems to be taking a back seat when it comes to Japanese support uh, from their own first-party IPs. They're, f they're firmly focused on in uh, on the West, and in fact, didn't they actually say a bit ago that they're now more or less HQ'd, as it were, in the in the West, in the US? I could be wrong. I may be thinking of some, someone else, but yeah, it seems like Sony is now firmly a Western company as in, of, of sorts when it comes to PlayStation uh, development. Which is weird because this is totally backwards from uh, like the PS2 and PSP era, where or especially PS2, where like they were everything, especially in Japan. But now it's like the other way around, where they're they're a, we a Western first company. But whatever, that's their choice. And yeah, their future in the portable realm is obviously a big question. Um. As far as the, the aforementioned IPs like Dark Cloud, Ark the Lad, and uh, Wild Arms, all of those IPs are developed by third-party uh, developers, all of which have actually worked on Nintendo hardware before. Dark Cloud and Rogue Galaxy are both by Level Level 5, who are now most famous for Yokai Watch, but also made IPs like um, the Professor Layton series, Inazuma 11, Little Battler's Experience, all of which have been on 3DS. And earlier titles like uh, Dragon Quest VIII and Dragon Quest IX. And yeah, they're obviously a big name uh, nowadays, and they were, their first game was actually Dark Cloud on the PS2. So it feels like nowadays they're, more, um, they're like a Nintendo first company, as it were. In fact, Eurogamer, I believe it was Eurogamer, uh, who first uh, spoke about a rumor that Akihiro Hino, the founder and president of Level 5, was at least at one point a potential candidate to uh, properly succeed Satoru Iwata as president of Nintendo. Uh, but obviously Tatsumi Kimishima is now the president, but uh, Akihiro Hino was meant to be the uh, the main younger, full, uh, very long-term successor, Kimishima is sort of like the stand-in, at least that seems to be the idea. He might he might stick around for a long-term, we don't know yet. But considering he's uh, actually a lot older than Iwata was, it definitely seems more likely he is just here to um, uh, keep the, the ship steady while they f uh, take their time to find a true successor whether from inside Nintendo or from outside. I think even Kimishima said he'd be happy with an outsider uh, being a, a candidate and not just an insider of, an, an, from the inside of Nintendo. But, again, that's another topic. But yeah, Level 5 is a very Nintendo-centric developer. Really, their only non-Nintendo game right now is um, uh, Nino Kunai 2 on PS4, and potentially more platforms, but uh, they're, not, they're not speaking of that yet. I, rem I don't think it's an actual exclusive on PS4, it could be wrong. But yeah, they're very, very, very Nintendo-centric uh, centric right now, especially because Nintendo localizes almost every game they make. They localize the Lightning series, they localize the Inazuma series in Europe. Level 5 just did the sole North American release on the eShop. Uh, LBX, Low Battler's Experience, was localized by Nintendo last year, the first one finally, after what, two years? And of course, Yokai Watch was localized by Nintendo, uh, the first one last year, with the second one coming out this year, in September, I think. Um, so yeah, they're very close. And it's obviously a big change from when they were working with Sony almost exclusively before P Professor Layton came out. But the point is, Dark Cloud would not be, uh, out of place on Nintendo, uh, handhelds. And maybe Sony would be like, you know what, fine, level 5, you can ha you can borrow the IP, Make a 3DS or eventually an NX game, and you know we'll we'll allow it. We did it with Popola Chorus, We'll allow this. You know, make use of it. So who knows? They they might allow it. I don't know. I'm just guessing, wishful thinking. Like I said, blah blah blah. And uh, the other IPs, uh, Wild Arms, was by Media Vision, who actually made two Nintendo platform games. The first was uh, the Le the Wizard of Oz RPG on DS, and the second one was Dragon Ball Revenge of King of King Piccolo on Wii. 
Those were both by Media Vision. I don't know why they made a, a, a Dragon Ball platformer beat em up or whatever the Wii game was, but mm, that's what they made. Even though they're a, more, of an, more of an RPG developer, but I guess Namco, Namco Bandai wanted that. But whatever. And Ark the Lad is actually by Cattle, uh, Cattle Call, who worked on games like, most recently, The Legend of Legacy on the 3DS alongside Grezzo, the uh, Zelda remake folks, like Ocarina of Time 3D and Majora's Mask 3D. Um, they also did, um, oh, I think the Metal Max series on the DS and 3DS. They also worked on, they worked alongside Ar Arte Piazza on the Dragon Quest remakes on DS and 3DS. Not 8, just uh, 4, 5, 6, and 7. And on Opuna, the, uh, that uh, quirky looking JRPG uh, by Arte Piazza on Wii. And yeah, they were they've been behind the Ark the Lad games on PS2 and I think other Sony systems. Uh, except for the one on, believe it or not, Wonder Swan. That was by Toze, folks, uh, the the Ninja Studio behind games like the Legend of Starfy games on the GBNDS and the Dragon Quest Monster games. And who knows what other games? I mean, they they had, they they like to keep their name a secret in credits and whatnot. They probably, I think they've worked on like thousands of games by now, and we maybe we only know like maybe a couple dozen. Well, whatever. So, Sony's IPs have worked been worked on developers from that worked on Nintendo hardware before. So it wouldn't be impossible for them to maybe attempt such a thing, like bring Ark the Lag, uh, Ark the Lad to 3DS or NX, handheld with by a Cattle Call and. Wild Arms by Media Vision for the same systems, or Dark Cloud, World Galaxy, what have you, by Level 5. Um, but as for games like Jack and Daxter and Ratchet and Clank, I don't see those happening uh, quite as much because one, they have like no no draw in Japan. I don't think uh, those games have much of, much of a fan base in Japan. At least, not that I recall. I know they gave Ratchet and uh, they gave Ratchet bushy eyebrows. They had this sort of thing, like uh, with the redesign of Crash Bandicoot in Japan. But anyways, um, that's you. You basically get the idea of where I'm coming from. I'm just speaking of what possibilities there could be should Sony and Microsoft choose to sort of be a what I like to call a fourth party supporter, if you will. Of of the of Nintendo handhelds or systems as a whole, obviously it's not terribly likely. But I say it's more likely than Nintendo releasing their games on Sony Microsoft hardware. That's for sure. I mean, I know they're making mobile games, but that's more of an advertising thing than you know making uh, than real serious investments. You know, and in terms of like, yeah, we're making like Ga Super Mario Galaxy on mobile. No, that's not happening. They're they're making uh. A Fire, Emblem, a Fire Emblem and an Animal Crossing game on mobile, and they will be more substantial experiences than Mitomo was, but not quite Fire Emblem Awakening, possibly Animal Crossing New Leaf tier, but small, smaller, you know? We'll see. Um, I'm interested in seeing what they do with those. Yeah, and that's basically it for my topic of today. So I hope you enjoyed my video. Um, maybe you agree, disagree. I'm sure you most will disagree, because I'm sure no one likes to hear that. No Sony and Microsoft fan wants to hear about their uh, their favorite console manufacturers starting to make games for other hardware. But you know, I mean, anything can happen. Anything can happen. You know, but it's just my point of view on these things, and I hope you. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video, and uh, if you have any uh, questions or feedback, leave me a comment, and thank you very much. See you later.